Hey, so today I have here Tara. Um, Tara. Hello, Tara. Thank you for joining us. Hey, so Molly. It's Tara, my pleasure. Yes. Awesome. So Tara did our five-week plant-based reset back in January, and she was an awesome part of the group. And I was really impressed with her because Tara has a very unique job, which she's going to tell you about. And she really gave this her all, and she made zero excuses um, as far as not being able to do this. And it would be very easy for her to make excuses on account of her job. So I thought that she was a really great yardstick kind of for me to use so that when people were making excuses um, about why they couldn't do something during the challenge or batch cooking or whatever, I said, hey, if Tara can do it, so can you. So you kind of, and I actually mentioned you a lot, Tara, that you didn't even know about with um, emails and stuff like that. So, <laughs> so um, that's great. So why don't you, Tara, just start and tell us what you do for a living? Um, I'm a professional airline pilot. Uh, I fly people around um, all over the United States, Mexico, Canada. Um, I'm usually, my schedule is usually four days at work and then three days at home. Okay. So um, that means three nights and four days on the road, and then four, four nights, three days at home. Sometimes a little less time at home, um, but when I'm at work, I'm gone. Mm -hmm. I, am, I am away. Mm -hmm. So you are not in your kitchen. You are not um, near grocery stores necessarily. I don't know. We'll get to that part. But you are not in your kitchen. Right. So, and that's exactly why I wanted to have you on because so many people, and I know, I get it, this, this eating a whole food plant-based diet, which you follow, by the way, obviously, I should have mentioned that, um, is, you know, can be a big change. And for people who are new to it, it can be not only a learning curve for, you know, how the fuck to do it, but also going out of the comfort zone of letting go of those familiar foods. And so it's really easy for people to make excuses as to why they can't. And one of the biggest things that I hear, and this is, you know, a lot of times it is legitimate. I know that people are busy and they have kids, and they have job and they have a life. And so I get that. Um, however, if you really, really want to do it, it is possible. So one of the biggest things that I hear coming up is I just don't have time to batch cook. Um, I just don't have time in my schedule. So here Tara is able to do this when she's not even home like three for three full days during the week most of the time. So tell us how you do it. What do you do? How do you make this work with your crazy ass schedule? Uh, meal planning is essential, but I have to take whole meals. Mm -hmm. So usually in a week, I need to plan eight to 10 meals that I need to have in my lunch bag. Mm -hmm. And that takes me, depending on the, the meal plan for the week, about two to three hours mm -hmm. to cook all the food. Mm -hmm. Oh, she froze. Oh, no, I do back. that here at home. I do that here at home. And I also, if I'm at my folks' house, my folks live in California, mm -hmm. I do it there. Okay. If I get stuck in Chicago, I have a place and uh, there's a kitchen there uh -huh. and I batch cook all over the country. <laughs> You're taking it to a whole nother level. Um, so when you, so yeah, cause you're not in the plane for three days, obviously you stop over and you're in different parts of the country. So you have your little stations wherever you need to go. So what do you think are, so when you say meals, like how do you store this stuff? That's my question. Because I know that as a pilot, you don't have very much room to, for storage. It's not like you have a big like refrigerator right next to you. So how does that work? Um, if anybody's ever looked at any, uh, lunch bags that like on the go stuff to take to work, mm -hmm. mine is like that on steroids okay um because some people you know when people take their lunch to work they're taking it for the day and right. i'm taking it for the week uh -huh. so it's a, a large um cooler size bag that slides on the handle of my rollerboard okay and it's inside there it fits three of those um i don't know if you're familiar with the fit packer like containers plastic storage containers okay. are they like insulated containers no they're just um plastic the 
the lunch bag is very insulated. Ah, okay. It's it's um I got it from strong bags. Um not plugging them, but I've been doing yeah. this for a long time. Yeah. And um they have one of the best products out there. Um, no, I think that's my- actually great because so many people, like I get a lot of people who travel a lot for work, obviously not on the level or not the amount that you do, but that's a really great thing. So strong, is it strongbags.com that you just get them online? And that's yeah. fine. I don't care. Shameless plug because if that helps and if that's helpful, then by all means, go find that. If you're traveling a lot, use those. Because I know that storage, you know, it's not like everybody can just like bring a big cooler with them, you know? Well, and this bag fits under um, the, I, I travel on an airplane to get to work. It goes, it goes under the seat in front of me. Mm-hmm. Um, and if I leave my house, I can leave my house in Arizona at 3 a.m., uh-huh. go to work in Chicago, fly all day, and get to the hotel room at night, mm-hmm. and my freezer bags, because I put, you know, the ice bags. Yep in it they're still frozen ah that's good yeah yeah and that's that's a big piece of the puzzle there you pack three days worth of food with you when you go to work four four days four days of food okay so tell me then like when you're doing your batch cooking i know that you do meal plans and so you're doing your your batch cooking day and you said it takes like two and a half hours typically yeah, two to three hours, depending on the complexity of, you know, whatever, if I'm... Okay, so tell me, tell me some of the things that work really well for you to batch cook that are really good to have on the go, because there's some things that would work, I imagine, you know, better than others um, that you can eat, you know, that you don't have to heat up necessarily. So what are some of your, like, staple items that you typically always have or, like, variations of items that you always have and then items that you just found don't work at all? <laughs> um. The only time things don't work is if sometimes I don't have a microwave Mm -hmm. and in the summer, I don't want to heat up a lot of food. So, um, just like your meal plans, you know, when you are planning meal plans for people for the week, you're looking at what's seasonal, what's Mm -hmm. available. Um, and that's the best thing because in the summer we don't want to eat a lot of hot foods. So right now I'm, transitioning to cold foods um food that i always have with me are celery carrots and peanut butter Mm -hmm. um i always have um chickpea salad like chickpea tuna salad type um that goes really well in burritos um like wraps whatever wrap it up in whatever um that's a pretty big staple for me that's um, a great one especially if it's um if it's hot i know that you're in phoenix and i know that it's fucking really hot there um insane i'm i'm really happy not to be in arizona anymore i can tell you that um for the summer um i know that you guys have been having like crazy crazy hot weather so that chickpea mash is great and you can also do that with different types of beans too i know oh, yeah. I, um in the meal plan this week, I do like a white bean mash and you can just swap out the, the beans, but that's such an easy thing to do and you can put it in, in anything. So Any kind of one. bean. Yeah. yeah. Um, even, um, like burritos this week I'm making, um, the mac and cheese mm-hmm. and, um, I'm going to add some lentils and some salsa to kind of make it, you know, Southwesty. Oh yeah, that's good. We like our Southwesty flavors, you know, yeah. in Arizona. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I'm also going to use the cheese sauce and add it to some black beans and just make some burritos. Uh huh. Yeah. Any type of like burrito wrappy things are always really, really good. So, what are some things that don't work so well? So, I imagine like when I'm doing, when I'm creating my meal plans, I don't, I find that I don't do a ton of soups. And, you know, soups are so good, but. It takes a little bit of time, like they're a little bit time consuming to make. And yeah. once you make them, like you're really committed to that. And you can't do like a lot of variations with soup, like you're just kind of committed to like bowls of soup. Um, and some soups don't don't do well unless you heat them up. Um, right. Have you experimented with cold soups like Vichy Soie or any cold soups like that? Or do you do soups at all? I did a lot of soups this winter. Yeah. Um, I had a mason jar 
um, that went into my lunch bag that had two to three servings of soup, depending on if I put it, you know, on top of something. I, I always have potatoes. I, uh, I bake up some potatoes or sweet potatoes, just cut them into slices or wedges. Yep. And sometimes I'll put soup on top of potatoes. That's exactly then I may get um, three servings out of a jar. Of uh, what about grocery stores? So I imagine at home in Arizona, you have your typical probably sprouts that you go to or Whole Foods. That you I, do, to. I do 80% of my shopping at home at Trader Joe's. At Trader Joe's. Okay. And then what about when you are in a new place? Now, do you, are you really picky as far as where you go shopping or is it just kind of like the closest thing, the easiest thing is, is going to work? Um, I try and eat mostly organic mm -hmm. and, um, usually, you know, major grocery stores are getting on the ball, um, mm -hmm. with organic fruits and vegetables. Um, I think when you, when you're in the Facebook chat and stuff like that, um, probably the toughest thing I've seen is like sprouted bread, uh -huh. um, on the road yeah. and sprouted tortillas. Those uh -huh. are a little more challenging. Yeah. Um, but if I need to grab something when I'm out, chances are I can go to any grocery store mm -hmm. and find organic potatoes. Yep. And maybe a tomato and some avocado and just mash that shit all yep. together. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it doesn't have to be complicated. And that's great because most grocery stores, whether it's a Safeway and you're right, um, you know, regular chain grocery stores are getting so much better with carrying at least a little bit of organic stuff. Um, and it didn't used to be that way, but it's gotten better. And so I think, again, you know, people tend to overcomplicate it. Now, it might not be the best meal that you're ever going to eat in your life, but it's going to work. You know, right. and so, you know, I really encourage people not to, to put off doing this because, because they're busy or because they don't, you know, they're going to be out of town and not have their, you know, regular whole foods available. Um, because really our body doesn't wait, you know, our body doesn't know whether we're next to a whole foods or not, you know, it's still going to, you know, not, not be healthy if we feed it crap. So, so making it work the best that you can. How long have you been doing this? That's what I wanted to ask you. Okay, um, it's been about five years since I quit eating meat. Okay. Uh, it was, it's kind of been a slow process for me. I didn't do this overnight yep. and completely go in and throw everything in my kitchen away. Um, I transitioned to a vegetarian diet about five years ago. Okay. And then a couple years after that, um, tr transitioned to a whole food plant-based diet. And it's been an, a huge learning curve. And you just, sure. you learn something new every step of the way. And it's, it's great. I've been um, probably completely whole food plant-based um, to the best of my ability for maybe a year and a half. Uh-huh. Um, and then meal planning since uh, the beginning of the year, I mean, consistently having a plan yeah. uh, has been a game changer. Okay. So that's what I wanted to ask because you've been doing this for a long time, but what did, I mean, I, and I think being prepared because this isn't the type of food that you can just, Oh, you know, put in the microwave or open from a can. It really does take some time in the kitchen preparing. And so talk about meal planning and how that's kind of helps up your game. When you have food available to you, um, because you've made it already and you've taken just a little bit of time out of your life yeah. to make all this wholesome, delicious food, um, you remove the excuses <laughs> that you, <laughs> you've like already it. had lined up yep. <laughs> to do something horrible, to yeah. make a horrible decision. Um, there's, there's just a lot of benefit to having a plan in place, I waste a lot less food. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I go to the grocery store and I buy exactly what's on the plan. Yeah. Because if I deviate, <laughs> then 
food just gets wasted. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've seen it happen. Yeah, it's true. And people have this idea that, okay, well, they're going to um, batch cook. And batch cooking is an awesome first step. And anybody who's new to this, play around with batch cooking. Batch cooking is awesome. Um, yeah. But then, you know, it's kind of two parts. You have the batch cooking stuff, and then you have what you're going to make for your actual meals. And they're not the same. And I think that's where people get tripped up because the batch cooking stuff is like the first piece of the puzzle. And then it's what you do with that batch cooking stuff that then, you know, has to play in. And when they don't, when you don't have that plan, like you said, you end up wasting a bunch of stuff where you don't have everything that you need to put those meals together. And, you know, a big batch of quinoa is great in theory, but when you're hungry and you go into your fridge and you're like, oh, yay, some fucking quinoa. Huh, what am I going to do with this? You know, so it really does take it to another level and makes it a lot easier. So that's great. So what with all of your time doing this, if if somebody was brand new to eating whole food plant based or doing some meal planning or preparing or just wanting to add this more into their life, what is what are a couple of things that you you know suggest after this you know with, with being through this this learning curve that you've been through? I think the most important thing is to know that. The first step in moving in a direction is deciding that you want to go that way. Yeah. And I don't have, I'm, I'm not burdened with being hard on myself. Yes. I let myself, <laughs> I let myself slide on pretty much everything. <laughs> you are an anomaly and I'm glad that you don't beat yourself up, but most people do. So I'm really glad that you have uh, that taken care of and you don't do that. And I think it's really, really important as well. Um, so what are some other ones? I think, like we talked about with meal planning, the sooner, honestly, the sooner you get on the meal planning game, yeah. um, the easier easier your life's going to be. Um, you know, you, you could dabble in it, you know, cook one, two, three meals a week from the meal plans. Yeah. Uh, but I think it's I really know. a tool that is invaluable to me right now. Yeah. And I think really just making the commitment to jump in is almost easier than dabbling for a lot of reasons. And I just, that made me think of another question because you were doing the vegetarian thing for a while. So before you went whole food plant-based, do you find it easier now to eat this way that you've kind of committed and are doing a hundred percent than you did when you were kind of toying and flirting with it? Absolutely. Because for me at this point, there's no compromise. Right. You don't have to uh, think about it. No. Yeah. No, I've already, I've already gotten past. It's not, Oh, well I could just eat yes. that. Yes. Because I can't. Right. I can't. Right. Right. And, and I don't know, I mean, have you ever had any episodes of eating whole food plant-based, everything is good, and then you kind of fuck up a little bit, or not fuck up, but get off track a little bit, and eat something that's not whole food plant-based, maybe it's like vegan junk food or whatever, and then you try to get back on, and what does that look like for you? Um, it usually involves a vacation, mm -hmm. and, or a, a birthday, or whatever, and then um, where there's a lot of beer and cake oh, and cookies, yeah. but all, all vegan. Right. Um, but then when I'm done having fun, um, usually my husband and I are both in the same boat. Uh -huh. We, we come home, <laughs> we come home and we say, okay, back on the meal plans. Yeah. Let's yeah. go. And that's really important that I think people give themselves the chance to kind of like let loose and like, okay, have some, have some, if you really want some cake, eat some damn cake. Because this, as you know, more than anybody, this is a lifestyle. This is the, the most opposite thing from a diet that you could actually do. And if we don't kind of give into that sometimes, then it's not fun. And um, granted, you know, the, the problem with doing that is then you have to get back on track and it's usually harder to get back on track because once that sugar is in your system and that fat is in your system and that processed food, you kind of end up thinking about it and wanting it and it's easier to kind of deviate. And so I think that going 100% is the way to go for a lot of people, even though a lot of people don't like to hear that. Um, because I think it does take away the excuses, but it also just makes it easier for your body to crave real whole food. Absolutely. And that's what I learned in the reset. Mm-hmm. 
um, was that you can get all these things. Once, actually, once I got oil out of my life uh-huh. is when I really started to shed weight without even trying. Yeah. Yeah. That's um, one. And that was something that the reset showed me uh, that I could um, clean up even sure. my whole food plant-based diet a yeah. little bit more. I'd gotten a little too lax on some things. Uh-huh. And uh, uh-huh. when you reach for convenience foods because you're not meal planning, yeah, see, goes back. To then that. you start down the spiral of you know once you get down and you you have to start climbing back up. It it takes a little bit longer and yeah. it's 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 more difficult. Yeah, yeah, it is. It definitely is. And I think that that's good. There's always little ways to tweak what you're currently doing. You know, regardless of you know, if you're eating a standard American diet now, there's always things that you can do to tweak. Or if you're eating a whole food plant-based diet, there's always things to tweak to get it to the healthier side of the, the, the spectrum. So yeah. what are any of the um, like physical things that you've noticed since being really, really tight with all of this? Like any um, numbers or weights? I mean, I, I imagine you were pretty healthy before you started, but is there anything that you've noticed at all? Well, we talked about the weight. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm probably, uh, I think I'm about 145 right now. I'm 5'4", about uh-huh. 145 pounds. Uh-huh. Um, five years ago, I was 208 pounds. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so that's why I started, that was kind of a turning point for me and yeah. start started yeah. down this road. Um, so it's funny when you go get blood work done, uh, right away, everybody that does your blood work knows that you're a vegan. Yes. What I tell most of the people that I meet that are really looking at being healthier and living longer is that you just need to get started. Like you said, jump all in, try it, yeah. um, do a reset, um, and get your body moving in the right direction, and it'll thank you. Uh, yeah. it, it really is a good feeling to know that you're doing everything that you can to make yourself happy and healthy. Yeah. Yeah, it's very empowering, and you are not somebody to make excuses, um, and you're somebody who takes responsibility, and I think that that's a really powerful thing in this whole, this whole shift is taking responsibility for how you feel, for how you look, for your health. And when you do that, you you gain something. And I, it's it's hard to explain, but it's like you gain this power. Yeah. And it's a very, uh, it's an amazing thing to experience. And I'm um, really proud of you. And I've always been, I admire, you know, what you do for your job. And you're able to, to do this. You've been inspiring to me. And I know to a lot of other people. And I know that you're going to be inspiring to even more people now that we sat down and had a chance to chat. So I really thank you for taking the time and, and talking with me. And I know that a lot of people, it'll help a lot of people and just banish the bullshit excuses. Just do it. <laughs> it is. Yeah, it is a good idea to just um, stop making excuses and, and start down the right road. Yeah. ASAP. Yeah. All right, well, thanks again, Tara. Have a wonderful day. You too. We'll talk okay. to you later. Bye. Bye.